in terms of targeted attacks, when when you do see a targeted attack that's going at a Mac OS prominent environment or just at least one endpoint, mm -hmm. um, how would you characterize how those attacks may be different or interesting and unique in a way compared to what you would see in a normal Windows machine? Is there some way that they approach it because of those features that's different? Yes, most of them usually have to factor in bypassing. So something that I've noticed at least a trend in is as malware has evolved on Mac OS, what they're really like combating is no longer really user interaction. It's actually hardware interaction. It's like, how do I bypass like notarization, gatekeeper bypass, right? Like, how do I get past this? Um, how do I abuse XPC services so I can gain privilege escalation, right? Like, how do I break outside of the sandbox application bundle? So they're more focused on like, how do I counter these baked in security controls that Apple's really been trying to lock down? Um, you can even go into system extensions with that. That is something that Apple's actually been really moving in towards where um, it used to be for Mac OS, you would just like write a kernel extension and then I want to do all these things and play in the kernel, right? So a lot of AVs would write a kernel extension that way they can hook into the kernel um, and then that way they could see those transparent interactions. Well, now Apple's like, no, 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 no. You're not getting direct access to the brain. Like what you're going to do is you're going to go through our own separate kind of API and then you're going to talk to that guy and that guy is going to give you all the information that you want. And then they've started that. They're still working through that. There's a couple of extensions that they haven't finalized yet. Um, and then as they're working through that, then they've come out with ES Logger, right, which is really significant. Um, and that one is where, okay, now we're going to start giving you some visibility into the kernel type logs that are going on, which is fantastic, right? So, because before you had to go through the unified logs, which is where it's like, okay, log, show, and then you had to find the right string and then like pray that that was the right type and look at a bunch of garbage that was posted out on your terminal screen, which by the way, not convenient for doing something at scale. So like they've come a long way and they're moving up to that. Um, but I digress. So the question that you're asking is the unique vectors. And I would say absolutely going after the hardware hardening and then trying to bypass that versus the software. Because one key thing that actually came from a panel during RSA from um, a researcher at Jamf was that Apple is moving in the direction where they're taking all of like the TCC and they're putting everything behind um, different controls where the user is now able to give specific access to things. So the good thing is the user is very aware, right? Like we get these pop-ups and we're like, hmm, this is a pop-up. Why are you asking me for this permission? I don't know you, right? So we have that option. Um, the downside is on Mac OS, unlike Windows where you can have pretty clear, like you're not a local admin for a reason, right? Like we have very good permission management. On Mac OS, most people have local admin because it's just easier. Like I need to download a program that you don't have in your, like your service software provider, right? So I'm just gonna go and download my password manager or I'm just gonna go download my, um, like ver my, my adding software support for keynotes. That way I can have all my pretty graphics or whatever. So you wind up having local admin just so you can do these little tasks to be able to manage your everyday work life. And at that panel discussion at RSA, one of the things that they brought up um, for the Jam panel was that since that's the direction that Apple's moving, the social engineering techniques should be really interesting in the coming future. So we've seen it go from like normal software, adware tends to be the most advanced, um, and then that gets baked into the true backdoor malwares. Um, and then we've seen like the bypassing of hardware controls. And I think now we're gonna see in the future, the bypassing of like just really just the management of like social and like that social engineering engagement. I think that's gonna be pretty much the future of unique vector attacks for macOS. Mm -hmm.